Hey guys, it's Jill. We're almost into what I like to call spooky season. So to get into the spirit of things, Alex and I have been re-watching one of our favorite cult franchise classics in the horror genre called Sleepaway Camp. Now, this movie didn't really have great mainstream success, and no pun intended, it really was campy, but there are so many great entertaining aspects of the original, the sequel, the third one, and then they did a fourth one, which wasn't as great in my opinion. There was only one really good thing about it. And there are like bits and pieces of a fifth one, but it was really more using older footage, not really a complete movie. So I didn't bother watching that one. Like I said, it's called Sleepaway Camp and we have the DVD box set called Sleepaway Camp Survival Kit. Now, when you open it up, of course it has traditional first aid looking items and the DVDs. I actually looked this up recently. Alex bought it for me years ago and it sells for a lot of money right now, but I wouldn't part with it because I love these movies. The first one was filmed on Long Island and they definitely have the Long Island accents and I can do that because I'm from New York. It was really blatantly obvious that it was low budget and the ending was a surprise twist, which nowadays wouldn't be as shocking, but the first movie came out around 1983, I believe. So it was certainly a wow factor for back then. The second movie starred Pamela Springsteen, who is Bruce Springsteen's sister. She took over the main character role and I'm purposely not using names of characters because again, as I said, there's a twist. Pamela Springsteen also returned in the third installment and she played it, again, I say this quite often, very, very satirical, very ironic, very dry, and that's the kind of humor I like even in a slasher movie. And then for the fourth movie, Felissa Rose came back to play the lead. So there were time jumps in the storyline and the movies, none of them were big budget, but the first three, all of the kill scenes happened fast and furious, which I liked. The fourth one dragged a bit, but if you enjoyed these kinds of movies, definitely watch the fourth one. Now, my favorite thing about this entire franchise, I'm gonna do a little storytelling right now. I'm not a name dropper. I've been in the entertainment industry for many, many years. And when I was a gigging musician, I also bartended in between. I worked at a local place in New York that had a regular following for karaoke. So I had seen the original Sleepaway Camp many, many years prior. And then one day I rewatched it with my husband. And as I'm watching it, I start looking at this character, Frank the Cop. And I'm looking closer and closer and I go, oh my God, I think that's one of my karaoke bar customers, Alan. And Alex is like, what are you talking about? And I'm going, I'm telling you, this guy is one of my customers. And I had also remembered that Alan had told me he was at that point in time, a hand model. He did magazine shoots and things like that as a hand model. And he had even shown me his portfolio because he came straight from work one day. So one day I'm at work and it's karaoke night and in walks my customer, Alan, for karaoke. And I said to him, Alan, I have to ask you a question. I recently just rewatched one of my favorite all time horror movies. And he gets this big Cheshire grin. Apparently, Alan Breton had been in a few of these slasher movies. I said, were you by any chance Frank the Cop in Sleepaway Camp? And he lit up, he was so excited that I recognized him. He told me all of these great stories and he lived close to the bar that I worked at. So he actually ran home and got me his SAG headshot card and signed it. I still have it, but right now it's in a box of memorabilia in our garage since we moved from New York. I was so excited to sit down and chat with Alan about all of these horror movies. And if you watch the original Sleepaway Camp, which Alan was in as Frank the Cop, he had a mustache. By the very end of the movie, 
you could tell that that mustache was so blatantly, obviously fake. It looked like paint or what they use, baseball players use under their eyes, black. Alan explained to me that he went to the producers telling them he was about to film another movie where they wanted him clean shaven. And they said, oh, don't worry, you can shave your mustache, we'll just put a fake one on. And again, it's just part of the, the cult classic whole genre of this movie and everything about it. But I have to tell you, I've met people from Julia Roberts in her prime heyday, and she was quite cordial, to musicians that were my heroes and so many people in between. Nothing thrilled me more than meeting Alan Breton, who played Frank the Cop. It was just so exciting for me because, again, Sleepaway Camp is one of my all-time favorite slasher horror films. So if you're looking for something to watch, Right now, heading into spooky season, I do believe that it's available to rent or buy on Prime. You can check some of the other streaming sites, but don't expect any high budget things in these movies. They were shot in the 80s, except for the last one, which came out in the 2000s. But still, it didn't have a large budget, but it was just so fun. And there are so many sarcastic things in it within the killings that I found amusing for an entertaining horror film. So definitely go check it out. Let me know if you like it. Let me know if you liked Felissa Rose better in the lead or if you preferred Pamela Springsteen. There are a lot of threads about it online. Go check them out. They're really fun movies. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like my channel, please make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit like on my video, and make sure to comment because I love chatting with all of you. Thanks again. I'll see you all soon.